PTO 2020 World Championship at Challenge Daytona. It's going to be the most exciting triathlon race for me anyway this year, 2020. Is it going to be interesting? Yes, definitely. Is it going to be more interesting if you watch through this theory drive video? Yes. I'm going to take a slightly different point of view from some other uh, YouTubers would dissect this race. I look at the bike, crucial bike time and how the swim is going to affect the whole dynamics. It's happening on the 6th of December, yes, in a few days, at Daytona Speedway, Daytona International Speedway, um, in Florida. That's where IndyCar race is happening, uh, but this time it's used for triathlon. It, it was done in the past as well. I watched this amazing video by Lionel Sanders about the, the same race last year, and that was very exciting. This year, it's going to be even more exciting because there are tons of top triathletes from both short distance and long distance. It will be broadcasted live. I will tell you guys more details later in this video. So why many top triathletes are gathering? One, because there hasn't been many races, especially for long distance triathlon. And on top of that, there will be a huge amount of prize money. Well, it's huge for triathlon. The first um, would get 130 US dollars, and that's gonna go all the way down to the 60th. PTO is trying to help triathletes, professional triathletes, because they're not getting enough races this year. Now, the distance. Swim 2K, bike 80K, and run, 18k so all of them together would make 100k that consists of two laps of 1k swim then 20 laps of 4k on a, on a race course it's it's got a bank going round and round and they run around the course as well that's gonna be 18k um four laps of 4.5k. To think about race dynamics, I had a look at the race last year, Challenge Daytona, but they had a, a different distance. They did a uh, uh, one mile swim, 37.5 mile bike, and 8.2 mile run. In kilometers, that was 1.6k swim, 62k bike, and 13.1k run. Last year, the front pack finished the swim under 21 minutes. Lionel Sanders was about two minutes behind. Pablo de Pena Gonzalez finished his bike in one hour and 17 minutes. That's the average of 46.9 kilometers per hour. And at the end of the bike, Lionel Sanders caught up. He did average of 48 kilometers per hour. That's fast. Then they had what I call the battle of the year. Gonzalez made surges after surges and Sanders seared it every time. And as Sanders thought, oh, I won't be able to do any more, he could actually have a gap and took off. And he finished the run in 43 minutes. For women, Lucy Charles Barclay finished the swim just under 22 minutes. The winner, Paula Findlay, filled a gap of one minute during the bike. For Quadro Run, they ran together and Findlay took off and finished her run in about 49 minutes. This year, the field is totally different. There will be heaps of fast, short course triathletes from World Triathlon. Now, it, it used to be called ITU, but it's called World Triathlon. And of course, Challenge and Ironman triathletes for middle and long distance races. They all get together and race against each other. 
I think the most crucial part of the race this year will be the swim. And you will understand why after I tell you about the bike. What is the difference of possible bike time between fast swimmers and so-called Uber bikers over 80 kilometers? The fastest 70.3 bike split was set by Andrew Starkovich. The average speed of 46.6 kilometers per hour. If someone does the same speed over 80 kilometers, that's going to be about 103 minutes. So that's the key number, 103. I had a look at Norwegian's bike splits at 70.3 Bahrain when they broke the 70.3 world record. They did average 46.1 kilometers per hour over the 90 kilometers. If we apply that to 80 kilometers, that's going to be about 104, 104 minutes. That's the second important number. There's only one many difference. Now there's a difference at Challenge Daytona because there's a 20 meter drafting rule. So they have to keep the distance from the front wheel to the front wheel of the person behind. They have to keep 20 meters. At Ironman branded races, they usually have 12 meters. So oh, there'll be eight meters difference. That difference is quite big because when you have 12 meter drafting rule, you actually have a bit of drafting benefits still. But with 20 meters, that's almost gone. Considering that factor, the difference would be two minutes max of three minutes. By the way, just to give you some ideas, if someone rides at 48 kilometers per hour average, that's gonna be 100 minutes, and each lap is gonna be five minutes. If someone rides 80 kilometers in 105 minutes, that's gonna be the average of 45.7 kilometers per hour. So you can have these numbers in your head. For women, the difference will be slightly more and it's gonna be more difficult to predict, in my opinion. Now we're going to apply these numbers at the end of the swim. So a bit of a rewind. For men, one at three minutes and one at four minutes, these are uh, kind of crucial numbers. If fast bikers could finish the swim, within two minutes behind fast swimmers and maybe possibly maybe three minutes behind they might be able to finish the bike together if they are slower than three or four minutes behind the fast swimmers i think there'll be a very very slim chance of standing on a podium for women it's slightly more relaxed i say but four minutes that would be the max once they start to run it's gonna be just a, a suffer for a survival race to the end of the the run leg um, in my opinion there won't be too much of a difference between the short course triathletes and long mid to long distance triathletes uh, over 18 kilometers um, I think that's been proved by how fast Sebastian Kinle uh, ran at the uh, World Championship, 70.3 World Championship in Nice. He, he ran as fast as other fast short course guys. So I don't think there won't be much difference. Now, here is my predictions after the swim. Um, I've made a list, so I, I'm gonna read through. Uh, Annie Haug. Holly Lawrence, Lauren Brandon, Nicholas Spirig, Lisa Norden, Lucy Hall, and perhaps Laura Phillip. I believe these women can swim in a bunch. They, they're all good swimmers and they, they all finish off the swim together, except for Laura Phillip. I'm not too sure how good her swim is now, so I can't really say but she could come out of the water with Anne Haag in corner in 2019. So that could well be possible. I think during the bike, 
someone like Lucy Hall, uh, Holly Lawrence, they would drop. I don't think they can keep up with the um, the pace with others. Um, one person who I'm really interested in is uh, uh, Nicola Spirik. When she does short course races, she always, always leads the pack to to catch up to the, the front group. And uh, this time, I think they're going to come out together in this, after the swim. So. She will be a beast on a bike. My top three. Um, first, right on the top of the podium, Nicola Spirig. I think there'll be a, a very good chance of her getting on top of the podium. She got a specialized shift, you know, just like Lucy Charles Barclay. Fast bike with her legs and that bike. Whoa, and we all know how resilient she is during the run. She is strong, S as strong as Annie Haug. And I think Annie Haug would be the second. The only difference between Spirit and Haug is that uh, Haug hasn't raced recently. So that that would be a difference, and I think Spirit Spirit has got it. Third, possibly third, is Laura Philip. She runs really fast at the moment. Um, I haven't seen the numbers, but that's uh, what I saw um, on her Instagram. Yes, you can't really tell how fast, how good she is on Instagram posts because everyone posts something really good but uh, oh she's got a new bike too new canyon yeah so it highly depends on where she comes out of the water but Laura Phillip has got quite a bit of a chance she runs fast so these are top three in women Nika Spirig Aniha then Laura Phillip. These are my top three. Now I'm going to talk about men out of the water. Again, I've got a list. First, Henry Schumann, then Vincent, Vincent Louis, Alistair Brownlee, Johnny Brownlee. I think these four are definitely going to be in the first group and they're going to lead a swim. I think they'll be about 30, 45 seconds ahead of the second group. In the second group, I would think Gustav Eden, Rudy von Berg, Ben Knut, maybe even Tim O'Donnell. T.O. I, I want T.O. to be in there. I just want him to be in the second group. I want to see him. I want to see him. Just, just my personal thing. Okay, then we put that uh, equation of the bike and stuff. So... I would say we can ignore Uber bikers in this format. So here are my top three on the podium. First, Gustav Eden. He won 70.3 world champs in 2019. This time he won't be riding his road bike but his triathlon bike. I think he's got a very good chance of winning. He's he hasn't held the current 70.3 world record, but he's the second fast after Christian Blumenfeld. So I believe he's gonna be first. Second, I would put my bet on Vonson Louis. Yes, he is super fit. He's just winning pretty much everything in World Triathlon. And he's also got a, a new ship, just like Spirig. Um, yeah, as we see all the time, he's really strong on a bike. And of course he can run just, just so fast. Third, Alistair Brownlee. He also has got a new bike. He's got a new Scott just like Sebastian Kingley. 
I think his problem is that he always makes unnecessary surges earlier in the race. Um, in Nice, he just pushed quite hard as soon as he, he got out of the water and I think that affected his run quite badly. That's why he couldn't keep up with Gustav Eden. And I think that's gonna happen again. Yes, he has gained quite a bit of long distance experience, but his, it's, I, I think it's his nature. That's why he, he got to, to hot during the biking corner as well. And what happened? He finished, I can't remember, uh, not top 10. He, he just got destroyed. It won't be that bad like in Connor, but in this case, I think Ronson Louis and Gustav Eden are going to outrun. The winner from last year, Lionel Sanders, I don't think he would make it to top three just because his swim is not fast enough and even if he's got amazing bike because he just did a Canadian one hour record and his form is super smooth and I'm pretty sure he can ride well even on a bank because he did a, a velodrome but it's just so difficult to bridge that gap if he can swim three minutes behind the top swimmers then maybe maybe four minutes that's I don't I don't think that's gonna be enough margin uh, when he comes to run because he needs to push just ridiculously hard and the best position he can come out would be fourth the same applies to Sebastian Kingley and Cameron Worth these uber bikers won't be able to get on the podium. So these are my predictions. Quickly I'm going to go through what time you can watch their things because in different time zones it's a bit different. Okay, so uh, I'm going to read through. Oh, it, it's happening on the 6th of December. Um, Tokyo time from 11.30 p.m. Uh, Hong Kong, Singapore. Um, starts from 10.30 p.m. Berlin um, European time the broadcast starts at 3.30 p.m. it's a lot better London time 2.30 p.m. and Florida where where the race is happening that's from 9.30 p.m. Uh, 9.30 a.m. I think that's the same for New York I suppose when you um, watch the, the broadcast you can actually um, register yourself and also put the donation. Um, I actually went through how it's like and there are uh, different options like zero euros like giving none, 20, 40, 100, 1000 euros. There are some options to make some donations um, over on computer. I've read that uh, on mobile devices there will be only single option. Oh, by the way, there will be different currencies depending on where you're watching. Um, so I suppose it's better to watch on a computer and make some donation because these triathletes actually need more money to, to live. And PTO doesn't cover only the top triathletes, but some um, triathletes who have uh, very severe financial difficulties too. I mean, imagine it's like a, a, a pro, but you can't go to work. You, you're working, but you just can't go to work. I know there are so many people who are in the same situations too. But if you're in a, a better position, please do donate. Um, I registered on a computer. I couldn't actually make donation because I was doing a test run. I hope I can make extra donation. Anyway, that's all from me. Um, it's going to be very exciting for sure. I'm not too sure if the age group race is going to be happening uh, because of the, um, the situation in the States, but I've heard and read that the pro races will be there.
it's happening and unless it's gonna be some natural disaster or something I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen and it's gonna be wicked so hopefully that was good fun even though that was very dry but I think these details would make you appreciate more when you watch the race on a day or even after the race if you if you want to see how it developed these numbers would help you to understand more so see you in the next video I just realized that I forgot someone very important and prominent Javier Gomez how did I forget he will be there he's gonna be maybe finishing a swim with the top group or maybe with the second group like or likes of uh, Gustav Eden and I'm pretty sure he will be right there off T2 oh and uh, another thing I just didn't realize that uh, Cameron Wolf won't be um, participating that's what I heard I guess he's done enough races this year anyway that's really all for this video if you haven't subscribed please do so and hit the bell and put the like button whatever and see you in the next video